So hello, uh, this is the GFC conference session 3AE, Open Telemetry and IBM Z Application Performance Monitoring, how we figured out distributed tracing on Z. I have to say, I didn't understand a word of that, but I'm sure I will soon. Okay, so uh, your presenter today will be Taylor Donner. Um, I know uh, the published um, presenter was Aaron Young, but unfortunately due to a uh, difference in time zones for one week, um, there was a, a, a mistake and a double booking. So uh, Taylor has kindly uh, stepped in to uh, deliver this session. Um, if you have any questions at any point, please uh, put them in the chat. Um, you'll understand why shortly. And uh, those uh, questions will be handled at the end. Um, please also uh, show your appreciation for your presenters today by giving generously to uh, our charities for this year, the RNLI uh, Lifeboat uh, Charity and the uh, Guide Dog for the Blind. Uh, <laughs> not like I said in the previous presentation, <laughs> blind dogs. Okay, <laughs> so um, uh, we all make mistakes. Um, okay, so I'll hand you over now to Taylor who will uh, take you through this session. Over to you, Taylor. Hi, folks. Anna, thanks for the introduction. As, as she mentioned, uh, I'll be filling in for, for Aaron today. And due to some, some personnel conflicts as well, um, we're actually going to be presenting a recently recorded version of this presentation. So as Anna said, once again, if you do have any questions, please place them in the, uh, in the chat box. Um, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicole Nemec, and I am a product manager at IBM. And this is a pre recorded session for uh, Summer Share 2021 uh, on the topic of open telemetry and IBM Z uh, when it comes to APM how we figured out distributed tracing on Z. Uh, so I'm gonna go into detail today about you know, the importance and the background on application performance monitoring, as well as what we are doing as a company to ensure that IBM Z can be a part of your APM strategy, uh, regardless of which vendor you choose or the technology that you're running on IBM Z. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I will say, uh, since I can't take your questions live, my email address is right here on the screen. So if there's anything you wanna follow up on or, or have questions, please just reach out to me directly and I'm excited to hear from you. So uh, as we go further, um, I have to show the standard disclaimer slide. We may be talking about some forward-looking content in this presentation or discussion of what IBM may do in the future, but please just know that this is not any type of official commitment. These are just um, meant to be discussions about where IBM may be headed when it comes to APM, uh, open telemetry, IBM Z roadmap, all that good stuff. So, Getting into the content we all care about, um, I like to always start any type of conversation or topic with an example um, or a story that we can all relate to. Um, and this came from a friend that works at a uh, food delivery application that's very popular in the United States. It's not Uber Eats, though I've used them as their stock image, um, but, but they work at a, a, you know, a platform that you know, enables people to order takeaway meals um, from any place in their nearby area that delivers by a courier. Um, and, you know, they obviously saw a huge spike in business when uh, COVID hit. People didn't, couldn't go out to eat anymore. They didn't want to go out to eat anymore, but they still wanted to support local businesses and, of course, uh, avoid doing the dishes uh, and cooking for themselves every once in a while. Um, and he, the friend that works there was telling me this horror story, uh, you know, about how 
they were you know just signing off for the day uh for signing off for the week actually on a friday evening um and all of a sudden they started getting people calling them out on twitter and instagram their support tickets started going through the roof and they actually experienced an outage on their most popular time of the week uh friday evening people have just finished working for the week they definitely don't want to cook for themselves um and their whole system was down and it wasn't just a matter of you know customers couldn't place orders with them um it was truly uh, the worst case scenario where customers were not able to order which of course is their main source of revenue but they also had ongoing or existing orders that were being dispatched by their network of couriers um, and the drivers could no longer access you know where they were supposed to be delivering um, their packages or you know what they were even the general area they should have been in as well as a lot of these companies team up with their different uh local hood merchants uh restaurants of that sort and they essentially serve as partners by connecting them with customers in a way that they typically aren't able to and their partners were being really let down by not having access to this service uh as well again on one of their busiest nights of the week so they they did you know a reflection at at the end of all this and they estimated that for the several hours that they were unavailable to customers partners essentially employees the drivers that work with them they were losing on the conservative end two hundred and fifty thousand dollars an hour but you know more importantly than that their brand took a huge hit not just on you know what people post publicly on social media but they saw a measurable impact in people uninstalling their application um, they're constantly competing across these other um, services in the same category as them for good uh, drivers and folks that want to work with them as well as of course merchants um, typically want to pick one vendor to standardize with and so this was you know the absolute worst case scenario because all of the different groups that they're working to try and capture business from were just you know done with them frustrated and uh wrote them off for you know a long time and this is obviously not just specific to one digital service every business can encounter a situation like this and especially because things get so competitive these days um with you know any company really able to establish themselves and enter a market with very low upfront costs that competitive edge that you have to have against everyone uh, in your market really can be lost by just a simple few hours of downtime. Um, so this was a huge wake up call for the organization um, that, that my friend works for, not Uber Eats again, uh, but, but it's just one you know example that from, if you're on the business side of things, you can think about, God, I hate to be that guy. But as a consumer, we can all relate that when something's not working as expected, we get frustrated and we start to look elsewhere or we talk to our friends and family about the bad experience we had. And I think the, I mean, it's it makes sense when we put it in the context of a story, but if you actually look at the numbers of what people's behavior, um, you know, measurably kind of comes to when they experience application slowdowns or latency. Uh, Forbes did an analysis of, of several different um, customer experiences where they experienced a slowdown in a standard application or digital service that they use regularly. And just one second of latency, a one second slowdown, would result in roughly on average a 7% reduction in customer conversion. So hitting that button to go from, uh, you know, the taking you to your cart to go check out and actually make a purchase. And just overall customer satisfaction went down around 16% as well from just one second of latency. So it's not, um, obviously we've got those horror stories of you know a total outage and everyone is impacted, but it's not always just um, you know these catastrophic events that can end up costing us just simple slowdowns or timeouts or you know that spinning wheel of death that we sometimes get on our computers can really hurt your business and like i said when it comes to increasing competition across um, all of these different um, areas where startup costs are low and entrants are high uh, you you simply cannot sacrifice these numbers on conversion and satisfaction but at the same time i always do like to call out that application complexity is 
really, really growing. Um, it's not just the pressure that our consumers are putting on us to, you know, deliver better and faster experiences, but the features and function that we're building out in our applications in order to deliver these competitive experiences are increasingly more complex and more difficult to manage. And in the past, typically digital services were quite monolithic. Um, so it's just a straightforward web UI layer going to some type of business logic in the middle and then backending at a database. But we all know the adoption of serverless computing and containers, Kubernetes, um, all of that awesome stuff that makes DevOps easier and our ability to deliver faster uh, possible, it adds a multitude and exponential, exponential layer of complexity um, that now the IT teams have to come back through and manage, uh, especially when the bar is so high and that we have to avoid even just one second of latency. And that's all something that I, in the conversations I've had with customers universally common in anyone or any business that's adopting this microservice architecture uh, that you see detailed below. So this is a perfect storm. I mean, I, I, would myself not want to be in the middle of it. And like I said, I talked to a lot of customers. I have a ton of empathy for these teams because you've got insane expectations to meet and just a growing level of challenges that you have to manage for that to be possible. So getting into kind of the first main theme, I want to spend a little time talking about what we're seeing is our customers are really gravitating towards one central type of tooling uh, in order to manage this complexity. And what that looks like uh, is a broad adoption of APMs or application performance monitors. Some people say application performance management. Regardless, these are the suites of tools that are going to give you that full end-to-end -end view of your application. So when something has gone wrong, or something is running slower than normal, you're not hunting through siloed tools to figure out where the problem may lie. You're actually looking at that end-to-end -end single pane of glass that can tell you, here's the problem, this is how you go fix it. And so um, I like to do an introduction to APMs because a lot of folks may be brand new to them, especially if you're in the Z space, there's not a lot of APM presence on IBM Z, and I know we're all here for share. Uh, so I, I like to provide a bit of an introduction to it. And this, this gives you kind of an overview of names you may have heard in the APM space, AppDynamics, Dynatrace. Of course, some of our traditional players like IBM and Broadcom have our own APM solutions. Um, IBM actually recently acquired Instana up in the top right, um, which I'm sure you've heard about and I may speak on a little bit later. But uh, there, and there of course are lots of upstarts uh, like Datadog, as well as some you know open source platforms that I haven't called out here, uh, like Grafana, um, Elastic has an APM tool now. So there, there's a ton of competition in this space. Um, and you've probably heard at least a couple of these names so far. These are all going to roughly fall under the umbrella of APM solutions or APM platforms. Thinking, you know, more generally about what the concept of an APM tool is, there's three kind of big core capabilities that I would say um, an APM tool needs to have. Um, and the first one that's very common is just simply start starting to map out all of the connected and related technologies in a given application. Um, now on the Z side, we all are familiar with the traditional mainframe monitoring tools, and those are a great example of infrastructure type monitoring. You can see everything that's going on uh, in this specific box, uh, get down to a ton of detail about you know, the LPARs and the sysplexes, but it's really impossible to tell from looking at like an Omegamon screen or a sysview screen, which regions or which LPAR are involved in a given uh, business application. And that's really what the mapping um, that an APM tool starts out with is super critical at delivering. Um, typically, there is automated discovery uh, and correlation of, of all the pieces under the covers or all the, the pieces of technology in the stack. And those happen through lightweight agents that the different APM vendors provide and that go and discover or start listening to uh, business transactions to construct this topology view. And a really awesome thing, obviously, one of the challenges that we kind of alluded to at the start was that 
applications are constantly changing, new features are being shipped, new functionality is being delivered, um, and typically APM tools um, are able to kind of auto discover and adjust their topology maps accordingly to make sure that you're getting an up to date view of your uh, application. And jumping through, I have screenshots of a ton of different APMs in here, um, just so you can get a sense of how you know everybody else does it. This is Elastic's APM like I referred to, and you can see here, this provides a really nice topology view where you can see all of the different services involved in a given application, what their relationship to one another looks like, uh, as well as the technologies involved. And the same is true, here's an example of Instana, um, you know, this is mapping it out by services and you can see already we're starting to look at um, in an application, not necessarily in the under the lens of the specific technologies involved, but specific functions like the shop, the shop's front end product search. So it's much more tailored to the actual user's experience rather than just is our network healthy, is our, our queues healthy, are our back ends healthy. So going on to the next kind of main core tenant of APM solutions, I would say the biggest thing is really baselining what your application should look like. And so these agents that I mentioned that really are the ones responsible for building out the topology view, they are also going to go and gather um, detailed information about uh, some core metrics associated with the transaction to build a picture of you know what normal looks like. So the example I like to give um, is for a bank, it's probably normal that they see a huge volume of transactions on the you know morning of the 15th of every month if that's when uh, a large American a large number of Americans get paid because people want to make sure that their uh, paying their their check from work has been deposited into their account and they, they've gotten paid for the the past two weeks um, now if they saw that same spike of traffic uh, on a Wednesday at three in the morning there may be some cause for concern um, and that's really what we mean by seeing you know what type of user volume what kind of latency, what type of um, you know transaction volume we see to to establish what looks normal. And again, it's going to differ for every APM solution. Like I said, there are so many out there; they all do it a little differently. But typically, there's some component of machine learning in there to take all that data and process it and establish you know what's normal, what's a what's one standard deviation away look like, what's two standard deviations away look like, and in almost every case, you can be uh, you know really customizable and setting specific SLAs. You may say if I get anything more than a million transactions a day on a given service, I need to know because something is going really right or really wrong um, and vice versa. Um, and so, yeah, being able to get an alert or even a, a predictive alert. So maybe you're trending towards something that looks abnormal um, can be a really big deal in getting ahead of a problem before it actually impacts consumers. And this is uh, um, going back to looking at some different APM tools. This is AppDynamics. Um, and you can see on the right hand side, they, they have this concept of a transaction scorecard, which kind of gives you a feel for, OK, of all the transactions that this application has got going on, in this example, it's an e-commerce application, uh, you know, 97% of them are normal, so that looks really good, but 1% of them are erroring, uh, and another 1% are, are performing quite slowly. So that can be, you know, a cause for concern, and, and that be something that you want to investigate because it's not always like we said at the beginning it's not always the case where the whole system is down and everybody is being impacted some of the most dangerous types of um, outage scenarios that our customers experience are when you know the majority of customers are experiencing uninterrupted service but maybe one percent two percent are having a horrible time um, and that can go quite unnoticed if you're not looking at an application specific view or an application performance specific view uh, you may think that everybody's up and running with very few problems when actually a whole consumer subset is is unable to complete a specific action 
Um, and this, this view uh, is also kind of like a stylized app dynamic screen. You can see right here, this purple dotted line is a great example of them demonstrating, you know, we're baselining that this is what the load or this is what the response time should look like. In some cases, you're performing better than the baseline, but in some cases, you're performing worse than the baseline. Um, and that's really critical in getting ahead of certain alerts or concerns when they crop up. And then finally, um, you know, you've been alerted, hey, it looks like something is performing worse than normal. Uh, you know, we need to investigate or we need to solve this for um, our consumers before they're impacted uh, more than, you know, five, 10 minutes. And that's where uh, I think there's a lot more variability in how APM tools actually uh, offer this. But the diagnose function is really cool to see in action. And what I mean by that is, you've at least been able to isolate where the problem is, but in some cases, the level of depth that these tools will get down to can provide, you know, um, an immediate remediation. So some APM tools have automation uh, functionality built into them. So you can just press a button and maybe more storage is allocated or a process is cleaned up to enable things to start moving faster. Or uh, there's you're getting down to a line of code where the issue may be located. So you can quickly point to a developer and say, hey, this is where the problem is in the exact line of code. Let's go get it fixed. And so this is, um, I think this is in Stana, and you can see here that this is might be the level of detail when we're trying to remediate, someone might wanna get down to. So you've got very specific details on where the problem is, um, as well as you know uh, the, the slowness that this specific part of the service is introducing into the overall transaction time. So you can at least further isolate, hey, this is where my problem is, I'm gonna go investigate further. In some cases that may mean in a specific tool um, that may be beyond the APM if you've got a specialized technology involved, but you at least have um, very detailed traces in a lot of cases that you can consult in, in the problem isolation stage. And this is an example of I think it's Datadog, and I thought this was a really nice um, kind of view to show when I talk about, uh, you know, actually getting to code level detail. This tool actually shows, you know, of all the specific uh, code that it's monitoring uh, with their APM solution, it will call out specific hotspots in your code of, hey, you know, there this uh, class is taking up um, or this method is taking up you know 80 percent of the time uh, in transaction processing so it can be used of course if there is an issue um, and you're trying to remediate a problem but it also can be something that you consult during the devops uh, and early development stage of testing a new function or feature uh, it doesn't have to be you know once something hit production and a problem occurs that these tools are useful to you we know a lot of customers are using these kind of um, code level details or code performance functions and APM tools to uh, address things before they even push it live. So that's kind of you know a very high level summary of what we try to achieve with an APM tool. And moving on, I think now that you understand what an APM tool does and why it's so valuable, I think it's important to acknowledge that if you're unable to achieve true end-to-end -end visibility in your APM tool, you're not gonna get the full value out of it. Um, and like we just talked about being able to isolate the problem as to where it's occurring is only going to go so far if you can manage and view your whole application. And I'm kind of getting at the fact that when we look at all the leading APM tools identified by Gartner, a overwhelming majority of them lack any support for IBM Z whatsoever. So your company may be investing, you know, hundreds or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in getting an APM solution to monitor your super critical business applications. But if IBM Z is a core part of that application and you've gone with a vendor that doesn't support um, APM on Z, you're going to have a really, you know, painful black box. And this is an example of what that black box may look like in the app dynamics uh, application. So here you can see a distributed application inventory app being monitored by AppD. There's tons of detail. You can get that baselining as well as being able to troubleshoot and get down to the messenger class that's problematic. 
but a call is being made off to what it at least recognizes is the mainframe, but there's really no other detail being provided um, beyond just that a call has entered the mainframe and who knows what's happened once it entered there. And of course, if we've got any folks on who are new to IBM Z or, um, you know, don't understand the, the ways in which IBM Z permeates, you know, basically every part of our economy, um, mainframe is still very much a critical part of so many customers' business applications. All of our banks, insurers, airlines, retailers, telcos, I know those are huge APM customers, and I hear from just about everyone probably on this list that, hey, we invested in APM, but I can't see my mainframe or I can't get any other detail in my mainframe in this tool. Um, and of course, a lot of the um, applications that are being innovated on and um, built out with new function and feature on the non-Z side are really ones that can be subject to, you know, not outages, but significant slowdowns or hiccups when everything is not properly monitored. And of course, we know that there is a ton of data that resides on the mainframe. So it's not just the case that, you know, there's one little tiny piece of the puzzle that's missing uh, with um, the mainframe being included or not included in your APM solution. Uh, a whole bunch of the workflows and structured data that you need to be monitoring in order to ensure that your application is healthy and performing as expected is going to be located on the mainframe. And of course, when a, an APM solution can't see into the mainframe, it's going to be invisible to you, uh, which creates a huge problem. And so this is, uh, you know, a scenario that I commonly see in talking to customers that have invested in an APM tool that doesn't provide visibility into IBM Z. And the IT operations persona is typically the person we see using an APM tool. Most customers still traditionally have a set of IBM Z experts that work on the mainframe that are responsible for that infrastructure's health. Um, and so typically, like we saw in that app dynamic screenshot, an IT operations person is going to see this whole beautiful application view and then just one tiny black box when it comes to Z. And when they can kind of see that a slowdown is coming from that part of the application, they, you know, typically just start to panic because they don't know, sometimes they don't even know anyone on the IBM Z team, um, but they really have no idea where to start when it comes to the mainframe. So this example I have here is taken from real life. I was talking to an application owner and she said, you know, I, I, the last time there was a mainframe problem, it was the MQ team on Z. So I just start there and they, work their way across the teams pointing fingers saying hey is it your problem is oh it looks like it could be your problem um, until they finally find the root of the problem which in this case it happened to be a kicks issue but all that time is spent where customers are impacted you're losing money or revenue you're losing customer loyalty um, and there's just a lot that the customer has to sacrifice even though they may be spending a ton of money to have that APM solution in place that's supposed to prevent all of this back and forth. So moving forward, um, I wanna talk about kind of a unique problem that plagues APM tools, and it's really about being able to speak the same language because obviously as our position uh, in IBM Z and as you know the team that supports the mainframe, we wanna make sure that we can deliver solutions that enable IBM Z to be a first class citizen in all of these APM tools. And the one thing that you may find if you're at all familiar with the APM market, um, going back to all the vendors that I was just calling out is kind of familiarizing yourself with some of the names you should know. Um, these vendors all have unique highly specified ways in which they trace transactions. So they've got proprietary um, headers or ways that they are able to pass tokens throughout the transaction in order to construct that view of um, you know, an overall application. So as we started out um, several years ago in working at least with AppDynamics, one of the things we found is that, you know, we were able to build out an IBM Z solution for AppD, but we had New Relic customers that also wanted this support or Dynatrace customers that wanted transaction tracing from IBM. And every each one of them was doing things completely differently. So it was like reinventing the wheel to take what we had done for one vendor and enable it for another. But luckily, um, 
there has been a really exciting development in the open source community um, that has made a huge change in how we approach supporting transaction tra tracing for IBM Z. Not only in how we trace the transactions on Z, but how we make them available um, to other vendors in order for us to cover more of the APM landscape than we can today. Um, and so this project is called Open Telemetry. Um, it's an open vendor neutral standard API uh, for describing distributed transactions. So like I said, basically all those vendors on the previous slide have their own unique way of tracing transactions and open telemetry's founders, you know, recognize that it was going to be a pain for people to get locked into these very specific ways that the APMs were tracing their transactions, that there needed to be some common standard that we could all work towards um, in order for us to pro provide a very seamless monitoring experience, regardless of what platform you were using or what technologies you were trying to monitor. So um, this is a project that is um, supported by, uh, you know, the main open source foundation. It's got a ton of contributors and I would encourage anyone to go consider contributing to it um, because it's got a, a lot of traction with a lot of vendors, like I'll, I'll mention in a second. And instead of, you know, it, it basically cre alleviates the burden of collecting data from all these diverse technologies because it allows observability and monitoring solutions to focus more on, you know, the capabilities to relate data across domains, like understanding how a compute element interacts with storage and network, instead of having to focus all their time on simply just getting the data in the first place. Um, and so ultimately, there's going to be improved user experiences and business outcomes because these APM tools can become more sophisticated in um, not just getting the data, but what they do with it. And so going into the um, open telemetry standard in a little bit more detail, there's several components to open telemetry. Um, so there are APIs that are used to instrument your code to generate the traces, um, which is the component parts that make calls and exchange information with other parts. Um, and this can be performed via code changes or there's auto instrumentation agents that are currently being worked on. Um, most libraries are expected to come out with open telemetry capabilities out of the box and, and not too far off. Um, there are SDKs to collect this data and pass it to the processing and export stages and in process exporters that run with the application and can translate the telemetry data into custom formats and send it directly or through a collector to backends. Whether um, you know you want it open or through a source like Jaeger or Zipkin uh, or from different commercial providers. And then the in-process exporter approach is also language specific and it's the main approach used so far since it was the first one to really mature out, but they're, they're working both paths um, today. And then there's an out of process collector that's used for data filtering, aggregation, batching and communication with various telemetry backends. Um, and this communication between those is performed either uh, via vendor specific exporters or there is a standard open telemetry OTLP exporter that can be used as well. So there are several pieces that make up um, the overall open telemetry project um, that all come together to form this really awesome initiative that makes uh, tracing a lot smoother and a lot more open uh, than it has been in the past. And I know I kind of talked a little bit about vendors and I don't want to make this like a be all end all dedicated list of what people are doing with open telemetry, but here's a sampling of the different vendors and their approach to the open telemetry standard. So you can see companies like New Relic, Oracle and Ting Yen are all in on open telemetry and stating, you know, that they are really focused on that being their main um, source of tracing uh, for the, the future. Um, a lot of vendors are taking a more hybrid approach where they are planning on continuing to support the proprietary tracing methods that they've had for some time now as well as open telemetry, which is really going to be a great benefit for existing customers because they won't have to move away from everything they may already be using, but they will get the additional benefits that open telemetry can bring to the table. So folks like Instana, which like I said, was recently purchased by IBM, provides um, a hybrid of both proprietary and open telemetry. Uh, AppDynamics, who of course um, 
I mentioned earlier, we partner with is also providing a, a hybrid approach. And I know Dynatrace and some others are doing the same as well. So this is really kind of like the best of both worlds in many ways, because there's a lot of really great work out there that the APM solutions have already built. Um, and this open telemetry hybrid setup will enable them to uh, combine that with what they've already got. So we've talked about how IBM Z is missing in a lot of these APM tools. And then we've also discussed this new and exciting open telemetry standard. Um, but how do we bring those two together to solve the problem? And that's what I just want to close with today. Open telemetry is really kind of a perfect example of how the open source community can deliver something to market that really changes the game. And these implications are something that we're going to be able to apply to IBM Z. Now, if you are at all familiar with the ZPM Connect product, that's something that IBM builds and sells. Um, but this has been our flagship product for enabling um, IBM Z visibility uh, in your APM tool. Like I said, our partners so far have been very proprietary in how they pass along their traces, um, but we are adopting the open standard in order for us to uh, engage with open telemetry vendors as well. And so right now, our primary supported vendors are AppDynamics and Instana, but with the further maturation of the open telemetry project, as well as our maturation of open telemetry support with the APM Connect, we will be able to more easily add in and support a whole host of vendors. So regardless of whether or not um, you know you are using one of the two we support today, if you're a Z customer and you really want to use New Relic or you really want to use Datadog, as long as there is some ability to consume open telemetry, your mainframe should be able to work right alongside everything else in those solutions. And I think I want to talk a little bit in more detail about how this is all now possible because of open telemetry. And a big thing um, that you know I think really makes it concrete for a lot of folks is just understanding that open telemetry traces in a much more lightweight fashion than a lot of the proprietary um, setups that I've seen. So instead of having to track in one long token the whole transaction transaction that can get, you know, really clunky and heavy. Open telemetry is basically looking at, you know, in any given technology, what's calling it and what is it calling. And that's how that trace context gets passed from hop to hop. And it's much more lightweight in order enabling us to be able uh, to correlate um, these very, you know, detailed transactions, but on a super efficient platform like IBM C. So typically you're going to have, um, you know, some agent or sensor, whether it's the open telemetry sensors or agents or your APMs, uh, open to your APM sensors or agents, those are going to be instrumented on a distributed call. And it's going to pass that trace context that that open standard that I was referring to, it's going to pass it along uh, to the transaction that's heading to IBM Z. And we have under the ZAPM Connect product, everything that you see here in pink, um, we've got agents that run in the subsystems today, like in Kix and IMS or for ZOS Connect, that are able to identify that, you know, there's an open telemetry trace context being passed on this transaction. So we can start tracing what happens on Z and then stream that data off to our distributed gateway where we tie it all back together and then send it to um, send it to the APM tool of choice so it can be correlated with the trace context um, that open telemetry is providing. So this makes a really cool um, seamless experience for either our supported vendors or vendors in the future that are able to consume open telemetry data coming from IBM Z. And I think I'll close with, you know, some of the biggest hurdles that I think we will be trying to tackle um, as IBM a company in order to further adopt and embrace the open telemetry standard. And I think of this kind of future proofing the platform by embracing open telemetry. Um, so overall, I think one of our goals should be and something we're working towards is ensuring that IBM Z is a first class citizen in the game of distributed tracing, because we know, like we said, the demands from our customers for our digital services are only going to get more and more extreme. And in order to keep up with those, um, you know, every part of your application has to be fully traceable and fully observable. Um, and we have to start as a platform by enabling that um, in a very easy fashion, not making it 
something where you have to jump through hoops just in order to get that type of visibility. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of the things that we want to be able to do, uh, and that's this is really what the ZAPM Connect product makes possible, is propagating, you know, the trace context between the different components on ZOS. That's something that our product does um, for you. We want to be able to expand the different components that we can propagate between. So in order to add more coverage for what we can trace. Um, but at the same time, we are working with a lot of the middleware teams directly to get them producing open telemetry spans on their own. So there's still going to be work done for us to, um, you know, provide a lot of the context uh, where we've got existing transaction tracking support, but these middleware teams being able to add will only accelerate the work that we've already been doing for several years now uh, because they be, may be able to reach certain parts or make changes to middleware that you know we're unable to do as a monitoring product um, and, and more natively integrate the open telemetry span generation into their processes. And of course, IBM needs to be working on developing SDKs that make it possible to instrument um, some of our more legacy applications. Customers are still running things that are written in like COBOL, PL1, or ASM. We need to make it possible for those applications to be instrumented with, with open telemetry um, instrumentation so that those can be monitored just along everything else. And I know whenever we talk about this with customers, they're always quite hesitant to think about the idea of making changes um, or, you know, un opening that can of worms. But really, um, it's one of those things where if you ignore the problem when it comes to bear, it will be too late and you will be put in a situation where you've got a lot of angry customers and a lot of folks asking why we weren't ahead of this as we try and make our applications more observable. So um, contributing that back to the open source community and building this out, I think, is, is hopefully going to be another big priority for IBM uh, moving forward. So I I hope this was a really interesting discussion on, you know, what what may be possible for tracing on IBM Z and what overall IBM is planning to do in order to make open telemetry and the whole principle of observability more accessible to our IBM Z customers. Um, like I said, if you have any other questions or you want to talk about open telemetry or tracing on Z in any more detail, please reach out to me. My contact information is right here. Um, of course, thank you for listening, um, and I hope everyone is staying safe, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Hi, folks. Thanks for, thanks for following along Nicole's presentation. Um, we only have a couple of participants. Does anybody have any questions? And if you do have questions but want to get to them later, uh, I'm going to put both my email and our leads email in the uh, in the chat. Well, thanks for thanks for joining, folks. Um, hope you have a good rest of your time at GSE, and and thanks for joining.